was a long time ago, longer now than it seems, in a place perhaps you've seen in your dreams. The early 90s. So way back when, I was a nice little geeky boy with no friends, but you know, nice kid and watched a lot of nice wholesome things because that's what I was told to watch. And then along came a little film called Henry Selleck's Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. And to say that this film had a huge impact on me would be an understatement because this was a huge damn deal for me. It really stoked my imagination. It really probably affected a lot of my art style too. I was just obsessed with this movie. And this was long before I was even a goth kid too. This was just some weird little kid who just really, really connected to this wonderful imaginative movie. The weird thing though was, so I've, yeah, I've already mentioned that I was not very popular, but here's the strange thing about that is this movie was not very popular either at one time. That's really weird to think about now because Nightmare Before Christmas is everywhere. I'll get to that in a moment. But when it first came out, a lot of people didn't really know what to think of it. Because there were, you know, there were a lot of big animated movies in the 90s people went crazy about. Everybody talked about Aladdin or the friggin' Lion King, stuff like that. But Nightmare Before Christmas just kind of came and went, and it's kind of weird wondering why. It's also weird to imagine a time when people actually thought this movie was scary. And yet, again, that's very strange. There were parents who were concerned that this stuff was too intense for their kids. I had an aunt who actually did not want her kids watching this movie, and she asked me, did you think it's too scary for them? And I'm like, no, it's a great movie. It's sweet. It's wholesome. It's, it's got monsters and crazy sights and stuff like that. At the time, yes, it would be a little strange to have gags where a character opens up their head and rubs their brain, or a character pulls out their eyeball and snaps it back, stuff like that. It's weird to think about that now. Remember a strange time when this movie was considered scary and unpopular. So yeah, the kids at school didn't really care for this movie. I was, of course, the only kid who was into it at my school. That didn't bother me at all because, you know what, I liked it and I didn't care if it was unpopular. And it was just part of my routine for watching Forever After. Not even just around Christmas or Halloween time. This was just something I watched all the damn time and it was really inspiring to me. And then... At some point in time, not sure when, maybe around the early 2000s, mid 2000s, this little unpopular movie suddenly became really, really, really goddamn popular. At some point in time, a new generation, back when Hot Topic used to appeal to the goth crowds and the underground crowds and things like that, this movie's popularity just exploded and Nightmare Before Christmas was everywhere. All of a sudden, people loved it. Maybe it was people my age, maybe it was a new generation of kids, but this thing suddenly became very mainstream and very profitable. Sadly, that was right around the time when I had to stop enjoying it. Now, that's you know, this, this is a weird thing that has to be addressed in the weird way that fandom works and why, you, why we get very protective of something that we care about a lot but suddenly get very angry when it becomes popular. And why exactly is that? Is it dealing with the fact that you're getting old and something that made you feel young and childlike is being enjoyed by a new generation of children while you're getting older? Is it because this thing that used to be unpopular but you kind of took it and made it your own has suddenly been pulled away from you and given to the masses of people who should have loved it in the first place? Or is it because so much of your own identity as a misfit or an outcast is attached to something that really gave shape and form to the way you felt and all of a sudden everybody's enjoying it and you feel like your identity is being pulled away. It could be a lot of those things, but you know what, but whatever it was, maybe it was all of those, for some reason, for some very dumb reason, I suddenly kind of divorced myself from a film that had meant so much to me. Don't worry, I didn't do anything stupid like going yelling at the kids who were into it now or calling people posers or saying, oh, these films just yell out and, you know, crap like that. But it's just something that maybe had to stop and think, why did I back away from something I love so much just because it became a success? Sadly, that's something a lot of people do, but they do it in a lot in a lot worse ways. So I, I just mentioned a moment ago that I didn't take it out on any kids because you never want to be that fan. The one who gets super defensive over something that you accept it as part of you, but you don't want to share it with new people, especially with a younger generation of people. I've had to deal with older comic book fans when I tell them, oh, I'm a huge fan of Steve Ditko and his original Amazing Spider-Man run. And instead of these older fanboys, instead of being like, oh, that's cool, they suddenly get 
get very angry and saying, well, how can you be a fan of that? You weren't even alive when that came out. That's something I grew up with. You can't play with my toys. Get out of the sandbox. You never want to be that person. And thankfully, I was able to stop and reflect on that and say, so what if The Nightmare Before Christmas is super popular? It deserves to be. The feelings that it gave me, the inspiration it gave me, the wonders it gave me, and all that stuff too... That should be for everybody. It should be something that brings good to the world and makes other people feel imaginative and inspired and makes them want to create and makes them appreciate all the strange things that once upon a time were unpopular or socially unacceptable and stuff like that, like opening your head and rubbing your brain in front of an audience full of children. So you know what? Nightmare Before Christmas, it still means a lot to me and I've been able to re-accept it into my life while at the same time being so happy that so many other people are enjoying it now. Maybe there were other children my age who just didn't go to the school that I went to who were very much inspired by this movie. And maybe just to every new generation of children who comes in, into this film and discovers something that means a lot to them, that's really wonderful and all my blessings to you. That's sort of the theme of the movie is discovering something wonderful and even if it isn't entirely yours or you don't entirely understand it, you can still love every moment of it while also being accepting of who you are as a weirdo, as the Pumpkin King or... Okay, I'm getting a little lost, but you know what? That's just how much this movie means to me. To all my fellow misfits and weirdos out there in Halloween Town, and to everyone, whether you're an outcast or not, who comes into this movie and falls in love with it, bless all of you, because this really is for all of us. Merry Christmas, everybody.